Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we're making our way through the EKG coding reference guide that's now available online. And if you need access, all you have to do is put this link in, enter your email, click submit, and then you'll get an email. And in that email, there will be a link that you can click and you'll come here and have access, okay? Now we are in this portion here, part five, almost done with this aspect, uh, this part of the uh, reference guide, but we'll look at non-specific, if I can spell that correctly, so non-specific intraventricular conduction delay, IVCD, okay? And what that actually means here. Now we've gone through a number of uh, previous parts that you can go back and listen to yourself if you need. Part one, we looked at different features of the EKG, the normal EKG, atrial abnormalities. In part two, we looked at different types of ry rhythms, sinus, atrial, junctional, as well as ventricular rhythms. In part three, we looked at different conduction delays. In part four, we looked at voltage criteria, what was low QRS voltage, how to determine access, and different hypertrophies. We've gone through a number of bundle branch blocks as well as fascicular blocks, so you can go back and look at those. And now we're going to look at nonspecific intraventricular conduction delay. Now, if you want access to our uh, courses, our videos, and elsewhere, you have to go to www.ekg.md, and you can click here on the course and see what we have to offer, okay? There's a lot of great options now, and all that stuff that you see there is different from what you have on YouTube, okay? So that's a different uh, course material that we used to teach that you have now access to uh, obtain yourself. So let's get started. So non-specific intraventricular conduction delay. So there's not a whole lot here. The big thing you have to know is this is pretty much a wide QRS, okay, that does not meet left bundle branch block or right bundle branch block criteria. That's essentially what we're talking about here, okay? So again, the cure restoration at least 120 milliseconds. Obviously, it changes based on age, okay? 100 milliseconds in those eight to 16, uh, over 90 milliseconds in those uh, less than eight, okay? So the focus here, is this is from an adult patient, this EKG, so over 120 milliseconds. Now, if you look here, what do we mean about cure restoration? Remember, if you imagine here's our P wave, our QRS complex, and T wave. Okay, the duration is from the beginning to the end. Normally, in adults, it should be less than 120 milliseconds. Okay, but once it reaches that point, okay, and beyond, we call this a intraventricular conduction delay. Okay, and then you have to decide what type of delay is it in the ventricles, okay? So if there's no presence of right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block morphology, okay, that's met, then we call this a nonspecific interventricular conduction delay. And if you look here, okay, in V1, uh, you do not see any RSR prime that's significant enough um, that would meet the right bundle branch block criteria, and same with that with left bundle branch, okay? So we do not have right or left bundle branch criteria met. Now, if you want those patterns, all you have to do is go back and listen to those uh, previous lectures where we go through those in detail and why we see what we see in those uh, specific blocks, okay? So they're not met here, and the QRS duration here was actually 124 milliseconds, okay, based on the machine. Okay, so from beginning, of our QRS complex to the end, it was slightly prolonged, and we do not have any other uh, changes seen. Okay, now this can sometimes be a benign pattern, doesn't really always mean so much, but there have been some studies that have associated it with uh, more arrhythmias and such, so something to be aware of. But this is what we call non specific intraventricular conduction delay. Okay, so in adults, at least 120 milliseconds wide, or three small boxes, so meaning that there'd be at least three small boxes uh, in width of that QRS interval, and then the criteria for right or left bundle branch are not met. Okay, so that's the key thing. So if you look here, again, no right or left bundle branch block criteria met, and we have these wide QRS complexes, slightly wide at 124. All right, so not a whole lot here. Just remember, mean QRS duration over 100 and, or at least 120 milliseconds in adults and the criteria for right or left bundle branch block uh, morphology is not met. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. 
Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there. Very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So Go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.